I'm doing your phone, we're recording. We're live. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hi, everybody. This is Tanya Friedman, the Chief Operating Officer from Kinetics, um, coming from you, to you from uh, sunny Southern California. Um, I want to introduce attorney um, Carl Schusterman, who is an expert in the, his field and um, has many, many years of experience in, in international recruitment. Um, we are going to be doing a question and answer session about nurse recruitment, and there's nobody who is better equipped to there's nobody who is better equipped to um, answer your mm. questions in terms of nurse recruitment than Carl Schusterman. So we are going to be doing a series of um, of sessions um, with various questions. These are questions that have come from many of the nurses from all over the world. Um, and uh, if we get, don't get through all the questions today, we will um, continue with questions next week when we do various other topics. Before we get to the questions though, I wanted to just share a little bit of background about myself and Kinetics and why we are doing this um, information session today. So my name, as I said, is Tanya Friedman. I'm the Chief Operating Officer um, of Kinetics. And as you might hear, um, I am, uh, I'm American now, but was, was, <laughs> but, um, came to this country actually 18 years ago. Actually, on, on the, on July the 4th, I always thought that was very significant yeah. <laughs> to come on July the 4th, <laughs> Independence Day. Um, and I came here as an immigrant many years ago, so I know personally how hard it is to make that transition. I've been in recruitment for mo almost 30 years, so I always say I've earned every gray hair and wrinkle. <laughs> um, and um, I really have a passion, though, for I'm one of the managers of the company and have a passion for helping people make the transition to the U.S. because I've lived it. I've been through it myself, and I know how stressful and how difficult it can be. Um, we get, I, my, my team and I get calls every single day from nurses all over the world asking for help, asking for information. There's a lot of misinformation, confusion about nurse recruitment coming to the U.S. But today there are still many, many nurses who are very interested in coming to the U.S. and um, really want to make, you know, their American dream come true. And I see we have somebody, Jamon Thomas, saying hi. Hi, Jamon. And welcome. Um, so, um, we also, so there are many nurses who want to come to the U.S. We hear many, um, uh, much information, um, hi, blessing. We have much information um, coming in from all the news media about the nursing shortage. Um, and this is, there are a lot of reasons for that. One of the, the biggest reasons is that there's an aging population in the U.S. Hi, Reg. Um, mm. There's a, an aging population in the U.S., uh, there, are, there are not enough people being able to be trained because there are not enough educators in the nursing schools. Um, there are um, also, um, uh, you know, there, there are a lot of nurses that are retiring. So there are, a lot of, there are a lot of reasons of why there is a nursing shortage in the U.S. And I think before I get to Carl's very impressive bio and we get to the questions at hand, I just wanted to share one thing that I was reading recently um, I saw an article a few weeks ago um, by Robert Rossiter. He's a spokesman for the uh, American Association of College of Nursing. And basically what he said is that it's really a catch-22 situation. These were his words. There's a tremendous demand from the hospitals, long-term care facilities, and clinics to hire more nurses. He said there's tremendous demand from students who want to enter the nursing programs, but the schools are tapped out. There are currently about 3 million nurses in the U.S. However, the country still needs to produce more and more than 1 million new registered nurses by 2020, 2022, 2022 to fulfill its health care needs. This is according to the American Nurse Association estimates. So this is a, a real problem. Um, high asthma. Um, and we know that... Um, there just simply aren't enough nurses for the position. So it's not like um, anybody is going to be 
Um, it's not like anybody is going to be taking American jobs because there just are not enough nurses. And in fact, we are um, a company, we, do, we specialize in direct hire and we work with hospitals, skilled nursing, long-term care facilities, correctional facilities all across the U.S. in all 50 states. And they all tell us the same story that they are, you know, they're short of nurses. So there is a definite need. But over the last few years, there have been a lot of immigration issues um, hi Blessing, hi Khan, hi Rose Ann. <laughs> um, and we have a lot of, um, there have been a lot of immigration changes. So we're very excited to have Carl to speak to because there really is nobody in this country who knows more about immigration than Carl. Carl, I don't know if you want to maybe come a, Should I come get, a little closer? Yeah, yes. <laughs> get into the... Your husband won't be upset. <laughs> no, <okay. laughs> um, <laughs> So over the years, we really have had a lot of changes in the U.S. Um, we've had retrogression in 2008 where the U.S. ran out of visas. Um, we've had long delays with the visa bulletin. And um, in more recent times, there has been a shift from the USCIS where we're seeing increased scrutiny, uh, more requests for further evidence. There's a lot of changes that have happened on the, um, the immigration front. So... So to come to the, the reason, the purpose of the, this, um, this call and for tapping into the, the knowledge and wisdom that Carl is going to share with us is that there's a lot of confusion, there's a lot of high con, there's a lot of um, confusion in Helton, there's a, a lot of confusion from a lot of nurses about, um, you know, can I still come to the U.S.? If I come to the U.S., what kind of visa can I, should I be going on? How does the licensing work? Um, do we have, whoa, there's so many people, Jen Tinka, <laughs> hi. Mm -hmm. um, th there's, a lot of, um, there's a lot of confusion on the market. So we really um, need to you know, hear from Carl about the different visas that are available. And what we've done is put together a list of questions that are the most common questions from an immigration perspective. In further Facebook sessions, we'll talk about licensing, we'll talk about demand, We'll talk about the difference between direct hire and staffing companies. So there's a lot to talk about. And if we don't get every, done with everything today, um, we certainly will be able to do that in further sessions. I was going to read Carl's bio. If I think I, I should read some of it because it's very impressive. <laughs> it's also very long. It's very <laughs> <No>. long. <laughs> and we, we, you said we'd only do this for half an hour, but it's very long and, and he's very impressive. So he's been an attorney for 40 years. He served as a trial attorney for the, the INS from 1976 to, until 1982 when he entered private practice. He's one of the very limited number of attorneys who've been designated as certified specialist in immigration and nationaliza naturalization law by the California State Bar. For more than 10 years, he was voted as one of the best lawyers in America. Wow. A super lawyer by his colleagues at the bar. Carl was featured in February 2008 issue of Super Lawyers magazine. Actually, 18 issue. <laughs> oh, 2018. Yeah, Did I 18, say something else? You said 2008. I oh, think, my God, I think. 2008. Okay, I, I, I cut you out of my 10 years. Sorry. <laughs> Carl has been named as one of... I'm trying to get through all of this. Carl has been named as one of the top 15 corporate immigration attorneys. Um, he's earned the highest ranking in his legal ability and ethics from prestigious Martindale Hubbard Legal Directly. Um, he is on the who's who, inter the international who's who of corporate immigration lawyers. He's been testified as an expert witness. His, uh, he's the real deal. So he really knows his stuff. And if anybody can share with us about nurse recruitment, um, it's Carl. So... Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> I, I, Ask your questions okay. and I'll be happy to answer them. <laughs> so I've had a lot to say. Now it's Carl's turn. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to pose the questions. These are just, I think we're going to start with the, the, um, the initial questions um, uh, about um, what, what is the current situation? What are the different kinds of visas available? Um, and um, so we can get a basic idea of how a nurse can come into the U.S. and what is possible and what's not possible. So the first question that we have for you, Carl, okay. is can you give us a brief overview of the different types of visas for the registered nurses? Yeah. And, and unfortunately, the uh, temporary visas are very limited. That's 
actually what I testified in front of Congress several years about, ago. Uh, back in the old days, before 1990, nurses would come on something called an H-1 visa, and we got hundreds of nurses, these H-1 visas, and then they, they phased it out in the early 1990s. So really the only types of temporary visas for registered nurses who were born abroad are some H-1B visas, but really only for nurse managers, for nurse practitioners, and for uh, CRNAs, uh, Certified Registered Nurse Anesthetists. But it's very hard for just, you know, an ICU nurse or a, a OBGYN nurse to get an H-1B because the H-1B says that a college degree, a four-year college degree is the minimum requirement. And with hospitals having American nurses with two-year degrees in those same jobs, the immigration comes back and says, well, you know, it really doesn't require a four-year degree. So the, these advanced practice nurses, we've been successful in getting them H-1Bs. But an, another thing that's starting to emerge, Tanya, is that a lot of the nurses in the last 10 years from Philippines, from India, from various countries, from Jamaica, uh, have gone to Canada. And in Canada, we just happen to have this, or we have it today, I will see whether we have it in a, <laughs> no, we, we, we will have a NAFTA agreement. They may alter which occupations can get visas, but nurses can get a TN visa, a trade NAFTA visa, as long as these nurses have become citizens of Canada and we've been bringing in hundreds of these nurses on TN visas. Correct. So, Carl, just to go back to the H-1 visas mm -hmm. for a moment. Um, in fact, it's actually quite interesting because we know of a hospital in, um, in, the, um, in the South that had been sponsoring some nurses on H-1 visas and um, those cases have now been denied. Mm -hmm. um, so, because my understanding has always been that you can only really have an, an H-1 visa in today's times if you're a nurse manager, a nurse practitioner, or a CRNA. Correct. I, I, I think that's largely correct. Yeah. I think some of the companies tried to game the system a little, but um, I don't think that's going to work with this administration. I mean, yeah. they're, they're being really tough about it. Um, and I think, you, you know, H-1Bs are, are not a practical solution for no, most nurses that have to go straight to the green card. Okay. So, so the first thing that we've learned from the expert, <laughs> Carl Schistman, is that H-1Bs are really not an option in most cases for nurses, for international nurses, unless you're a nurse manager, nurse practitioner, CRNA, or some kind of specialty mm -hmm. area. So that leaves the green card, right? Exactly. Okay, so I think, oh, we already skipped a question. So can you tell us a little bit about the difference between a green card and a TN visa? Okay, well, a TN is a temporary visa. It's very quick to get a TN. We've got them for nurses in just a few days. Uh, green card is a longer process, and uh, green cards are grouped into uh, in the employment-based green cards. There's 140,000 a year, and they're grouped into different categories. There's We call them the EB categories, the employment-based green cards. Nurses are usually in the EB3 category for professionals. Um, and most countries have no backlogs at all, but the three countries that do have backlogs in the EB3 category are India, huge backlog over 10 years. Um, China, also a long backlog, not quite as bad as India. And the Philippines, Philippines. although I must say on the, because I would say maybe 90 per, my wife is Filipino, by the way, she's from Cebu. Um, and uh, I think I immigrated all her nieces and or all her, the whole or, family. I, 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 <laughs> most of her nieces have mm -hmm. uh, gone through Canada and come here, but mm -hmm. some have come straight from the Philippines. Um, but uh, just two years ago, the Philippine quota for nurses, it took almost eight years. Now we're down to 18 months. So even though that might seem like a long time in comparison, I mean, we're bringing in way more Filipino nurses this year than we have for the last 10 years. Yeah, yeah. correct. 
So, and you know, from our side, we have offices in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. We bring in literally thousands of Filipino nurses. Mm -hmm. And it has really been quite a joy to see how many people have been able to arrive here. I mean, I was at a, a hospital that we worked with um, two weeks ago. There was a nurse that I met in 2007 in the Philippines before retrogression, yes. and she just arrived oh my God. in the US. <laughs> we, both, <laughs> we both really <laughs> cried <laughs> when we saw each other. So for many Filipinos, as well as Indian and Chinese nurses, it's been a long wait. So there's been long, those long wait times, um, but um, you know, at least there is hope on the horizon. Uh -huh. I see we have a, a question from Kelly O'Neill. What is the difference between an H1 visa and permanent residency? Okay. So the H-1 visa is a, like the TN, it's a temporary work visa. If the hospital applies for you and you're an advanced practice nurse, uh, usually, unfortunately, there's another problem with the H-1Bs, which is there's, for most employers, there's some exceptions like universities and so on. And you can check out our on our website, our H-1B visa page. I have a video about this. But for most nurses, they're going to work for private employers, and so there's 85,000 uh, limit on the number of H-1Bs. This year, we had 190,000 petitions. Wow. So that means chances are not even 50% to get an H-1B if you're a nurse practitioner or a CRNA. So I urge nurses to do one of two things, either if they are H-1B qualified because they're advanced practice, get a job with one of those five types of employers that are exempt from the cap, like universities, <clears throat> or just go straight to the green card because within 18 to 24 months, we can get green cards for the nurses. But the green card is a permanent resident, so you can stay for the rest of your life in the U.S., while an H-1B is just a temporary visa. working visa. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, Kelly, I hope you can see the answer to that question. Um, and permanent resident and green card or EB3 green card is synonymous, right? That's mm -hmm. the same thing. Correct. Okay. I saw we also had a question, and it's just disappeared from the screen, about the I-140. And um, we were going to talk about the process for... Um, you know, for an adjustment of status green card and a consulate green card. And um, I'm just looking at the time. We might not have enough time to do that. Um, um, but, um, but maybe you want to just explain what an I-140 is? Right. So the first step in, in an employer uh, sponsoring a nurse for a green card, and in fact, let, let me just back up a minute because I'm sure a lot of you have had friends that have immigrated through their jobs and you know that most of your friends, the employer had to advertise the job, show that they couldn't find a qualified American. It's called PERM, and you go through the labor department for a few months to do that. Two jobs, two jobs left on the list that are exempt from PERM, and fortunately one of them is RN. The other one is a physical therapist. Okay. So these people, they, th those two occupations have been designated as shortage occupations in the U.S. So we totally skip that advertising job, which employers are very glad that they don't have to do the, put these ads in the paper. Um, so what they file, the first thing is called a, a visa petition. It's the immigration form I-140, and they show that they have a qualifying job, that they're going to pay the foreign nurse at the prevailing wage. They can't pay less than what they pay the American nurses and uh, that the nurse does have the degree and uh, is licensed. And there's other things we can talk about that don't go to the I-140, but they go to the green card stage, something called the visa screen and English test and so on. Okay. All right, so that's helpful information about the I-140. Um, in, in terms of the, the green card processing, before we get to the actual process and how the adjustment of status green card and the consulate green card differs and maybe we can just talk a little bit about if you are a Filipino and you have not been sponsored before can you go for the green card if you are an Indian nurse and you have not been sponsored before can you go for the the green card because right we so, know the answer but I, I want you to sure maybe sure share that. Uh, yeah sure the yeah. uh yeah I mean there 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 is one advantage to being sponsored before is that if you have an approved I-140 from years ago, 
and somehow didn't come to the U.S. or you were on a waiting list and now that employer doesn't want you anymore, what you do is you have the new employer um, file an I-140 for you and we say you can, the legal term, you can recapture the old priority date. So instead of waiting in line for 18 months or for an Indian nurse 10 years, you might be able to really shorten it up by using the old priority date. And we've done that numerous times. Yeah. yeah. We have thousands of nurses that we've helped with previous priority dates ah. that had priority dates from before retrogression were abandoned by the employers at that time because they couldn't get into the U.S. and mm -hmm. then came through now at this time. In fact, that nurse I was just telling you about oh, really? was one who has a okay. previous priority date. So just to clarify and make sure everybody um, gets that. So basically what you're saying is that if you are a country other than born, and it's all about where you're born, correct? Exactly. So we, if you're born in a country other than India, Philippines, and China, China, you can file a new green card petition, no problem, correct? Right. There's no backlog. There's so no that. backlog. So it's current. Yes. Okay. If you are born in the Philippines, you can do a new petition yes. now okay it will take probably about like i think about like they said about 15 months it, it, it's more like 18 right? okay yeah, so yeah. 15 to 18 months um and every month we will get a new visa bulletin coming out and maybe that's a topic we can talk about next week right about the uh, visa uh, bulletin. Oh, if i can men if i can but, mention one thing it's yeah. no no money or sales involved but for 23 years uh i i think i've driven my wife crazy by because i come out with a monthly newsletter and the most read part of that newsletter is the, the visa, visa bulletin. Because yes. there's four and a half million yeah. people waiting for their dates. So if you go on our website on Schusterman.com and you and just uh, scroll down a little and look on the right side, you can sign up for a free copy of our newsletter. And so you can keep up with the priority dates, how long it's taking. So Khalid asked, what is meant by priority date? Priority date means that you had a previous petition that uh, where the, the, the case was maybe um, um, was maybe abandoned, maybe at the, at the time of retrogression, and we can and what Carl is saying is we can recapture that date. But, so, but, the, but the actual term priority date for a nurse is the date that the immigration service receives that I-140 petition, even if it's the first time you're doing that. But is it when they receive it or isn't it when they approve? No, when they receive it. Oh, okay. So they, they, can, they can don't, okay. yeah, if they, if your hospital or your healthcare uh, provider or employer files an I-140, no reason to sweat if it takes six months to approve because it's the date that they filed it that determines when you're going to be able to come to the U.S., not how long it takes to approve it. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks for clarifying that. So just to go back to those, the countries that are in backlog. So Philippines, we spoke about China. There is a longer backlog. Yes. How long, if you were to find a new Chinese petition right now, how long would that take? Well, I would say five to 10 years. Okay. So yeah. that's a long time. And then India, I think is the longest, right? Yeah. In the, India, uh, what, what you have to realize is that when you look at the priority dates and you look at India and maybe, I'm not looking at it right this second, but maybe the EB3 category is 2008. So you think, well, we're in 2018 now, so it's a 10-year a ten backlog. <clears throat> That's not what it means. It means if you filed in 2008, you'll get the green card in 2018. But it's much longer because there's so many people who filed their petitions between 2008 and 2018, that it could literally take a lifetime to, yeah. to get a green card. Because yeah. it's not just nurses. I mean, it's all oh, yes, it, it's special, and there's a lot of IT. Right. It's you know. because there's, mm -hmm. some, there's no quotas on the H-1B visas for mm -hmm. per... There is an overall cap of 85,000. But if everybody was from India or everybody was from the Philippines, it wouldn't matter. But then when they go from H-1B to green cards then no country can have over 7% of the total. Okay. So then it becomes a, a, just a nightmare for a lot of yeah. people. I, I do want to mention one thing because uh, sometimes people don't understand it. There, I, and I have YouTube videos about this, but if you, it's called cross-chargeability. So let's say you're from India, but your spouse is from Sri Lanka, but you're the nurse or you're the IT person. Um, 
you can use your spouse's country of birth instead of your country of birth. It's called cross-charge ability. And instead of waiting 20 years to get a green card, you can probably get it in 18 months. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Wow. I can't believe I'm looking at the time. We're already done. <laughs> we said that we would work, talk for half an hour. We have so many questions. Um, please know that um, both Carl and our team will go through the questions after this call and make sure to answer your questions. Um, the uh, original questions that we had set for today, we have not completed. So we have more to talk about for next week already. Um, and I did see some emails from uh, people saying that the connection was bad. So I'm not sure why that has happened, but we will be saving the video um, and hopefully... Um, I, I'm not sure. So hopefully, you know, you will be able to see it better in the in in the saved version. It will be on the Kinetics page, and it will also be on the Schusterman's page. Um, I see a question from Joseph Rigador. I think I know you, Joseph. <laughs> <laughs> um, so thank you, everybody, for coming on the call. It's really been a lot of fun to um, to get all your questions and to get all the pearls of wisdom thank for um, from Attorney Schusterman. Um, so we really thank you for the time. Um, please make sure to sign up for the Schusterman um, newsletter. Please make sure to go to the Kinetics Facebook page, check out our reviews, and look at how we look after our nurses. Um, we are, are not a staffing company, so I just want to be clear on that. We are a recruitment company, and that means that we are kind of like, it's kind of like, um, uh, you've heard of like Match.com? Yes. Or... Yes. Um, Filipino Cupid, or one of those. <laughs> so, um, so we are career matchmakers in that we don't work specifically with one hospital. We work with literally hundreds of hospitals all over the U.S. Carl works with hundreds of hospitals all over the U.S. So we really have a lot of expertise in, in understanding and knowing this field. So thank you, everybody, for a really fun half an hour. Um, we will definitely make sure to answer your questions, so please post if you have any additional questions. Um, and we look forward to catching up with you next week. You're also welcome to send us more questions if you have them, and we can uh, post it to the expert next week. Okay, we thank look you forward so much, to seeing you again. And have a good weekend. Thank you. Bye-bye.